left, left off 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 21. And the king said to Joab, Behold now, I have done this thing. Go therefore, bring the young man Absalom again. Now that's David's son that ran off after he killed Amon. Amon for having uh, raping their daughter, I mean their sister. This is one messed up thing. And Joab has sent an actress before the king. And you know, there were these two sons of mine. And, and the whole thing is to bring Absalom back if Joab only knows what the trouble Absalom is going to do. What this happens now is going to upset the kingdom of David. Absalom now is playing out to be the Antichrist. A picture of. And you can find through the scriptures the first advent. They disregarded it and gave Jesus the cross. Not much on the church age, but there are places there it is. But oh, the, the, the time of Jacob's trouble, the time of the Antichrist, he's here and here he is in this chapter. Joab fell to the ground on his face and bowed himself and thanked the king. King ain't going to thank Joab. And Joab said, Today thy servant knoweth that I have found grace in thy sight, my lord, O king, and that the king has fulfilled the request of his servant, as to bring uh, uh, Absalom home. So Joab rose and went to Gershom, or Gershom, which means bridge. So chapter 3, verse 3. Now look at Gershom, this place. This is not chapter three, verse three, and the, well, verse two. And unto David were sons born in Hebron. The first, his firstborn of Ammon. His firstborn was Ammon. That's why I was just killed. Of uh, Ahanam, Ahanam, the Jezreelites. His second, Caleb. Of Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmenite. The third, here we go, the third, Absalom, that's the first time that word shows up. The son of Makkah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Gershur. That's where we are. And this, where he's banished, well, he banishes himself. And runs back home to where his mother is. It's also found in Hagar when she's banished by God through Sarah. She starts heading back home. So this is where Gershur is. This is where he goes. And then chapter 13, verse 37. This is a chapter back. Chapter 13, verse 37. Absalom fled. And went to Talmai, the son of Ahimedad, king of Gershur. That's his, that's his grandfather. And David mourned for his son every day. Absalom fled and went to Gershur and was there three years. So, 1338, until we're now we're reading Joab's going to bring him back is a period of three years. Three and a half years, the Antichrist is going to set that image up. So Joab rose and went to Gershur and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. Now is there going to be someone of Israel who's going to go and get the Antichrist? And bring him to Israel? Uh, this this chapter, The end of this chapter. Man, there's a lot of Antichrist in it. We're going to look at the verses. And the king said, let him turn to his own house. Let him not see my face. So there's a time that Satan is going to be kicked out of heaven, Revelation 12, and that is he's cast to the earth and he will see God's face no more. So Absalom returned to his own house. This earth before Adam was given to Satan and his angels. Before he fell. While he fell. 
Isaiah 14 says, I will set my throne above. And everything is, you know, here I am on a lower place. A lower position. And God is set on high. I'm going to get up there. I'm going to go up. The only way down he could be, as far as what the scriptures say, would be on the earth. And so it would be saying that Satan's home is this earth. And he told Jesus, I will give you all these kingdoms if you would fall down and worship me. Everything of Satan is down, 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 down. Plays out. And saw not the king's faith. That's his father. That's David's son. And this is the one that David loves. He says, I don't want to see that boy. You bring him to Jerusalem, but that's it. I'm done with him. But in all Israel, there was none to be so much praised as Absalom. What about God? What happened to God? What happens to God in the three and a half years, the first, in Jacob's trouble? Where is God today? They are outside of the will of God. They are not doing what God wants them to do. There is no God of Israel today. Unless they are to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And if they don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, even though they are of God's people, they are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Still the wrath of God if they have not the Son, according to John the Baptist. And then we're going to be at the end of the tribulation period that when Jesus mounts up and comes back to second advent, are they at that point only going to know who the Messiah is? After that three and a half years, they realize, oh man, that's the devil, that's the Antichrist sitting where he ought not to be sitting. Are they going to start reaching out and get trying to get right with God? But as far as Satan, let's look at Ezekiel 28. It says, pray. No other pray. Ezekiel 28. And this one we're going to be looking at scripture. Ezekiel 28, verse 12. And it's remarkable how God, see, we do these videos. This is my family videos of studying through the Bible. And we have read today the book of Lamentations, three chapters, to finish the Bible through the year. And in Lamentations, we read about the city was beautiful. And yet sin has caused it to fall, has caused it to burn. And how the references of Lamentations 1, 2, and 3 are going to fall in 2 Samuel 14. In verse 12 to 28, Ezekiel, son of man, take up a Lamentation. That's funny. We just started three chapters of Lamentations. I for sure that God's working with this family. How the scripture aligns with what our life are. How God has set things in this family that we need, that we don't even know we need yet, and God has set forth. Such as a, as a ride the other night to get to the hospital. God is wonderful. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. There is Absalom. And we will see that. And thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, and that cannot be the king of Tyrus. And many, 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 many. This says B.C. 588. And so this guy would have to be over 600 years old. And it's not. And I'll leave you to read the rest of this about Satan. But we're looking at Absalom. Absalom has that perfect beauty. So does Satan. Proverbs 31. What about a virtuous woman? Proverbs 31. Verse 30. Now we read, as you go to Proverbs 31, he says, but in all Israel, there is none to be so praised as Absalom. In Proverbs 31, verse 30, favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. Look at that, vain. What's beauty going to do to you when you're lying in a coffin for 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 
122,000 years. What is beauty if you're driving down the road and your head hits the windshield? What is beauty? What is the beauty that man looks at that woman, oh, you're so beautiful, and yet what's she going to be 30, 40, 50, 60 years? It's vain. We're not getting beautiful. Her. Every year I look in that mirror, I see someone getting older and older and grumpier and winkerer. That's the word. But a woman that is a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And there's anyone I could see in David's family to be praised would be David himself for the fear of the Lord and Abigail who feared the Lord. But Israel has come to the praise of Absalom. Why? For his beauty. And that's what we saw in Ezekiel. The Bible speaks about Jesus when he came to first. Death. There's no beauty that we should desire in him. Now, he's beautiful to us today. I've never seen him, but he's beauty to me. But when he came into unsaved people, there's no beauty. But when Satan shows up on the scene, oh, they're going to go gaga over him. And he may get his front picture on all the front pages of all the magazines. Realize if they were to put a picture of Jesus and they have on the front page of the magazine, that's not Jesus. Antichrist, when he comes, he's going to be a beautiful, beautiful continent. From the sole of his foot, that's the bottom of his foot, even to the crown of his head, that's the top of his head. Let's go to Genesis 3.15. Look how this guy matches up. You want to see a type of Antichrist? You want to see a study of Antichrist? Absalom is one of them. Genesis 3.15. And I will, that's God, put enmity between thee and the woman, speaking to the serpent, the subtle serpent, who is Satan, Revelation 12. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, crown of his head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Well, look at that reference coming back here to Absalom. There's Genesis 3.15 right there describing Absalom in beauty of Ezekiel 28. There is no doubt who this creature is. A man. Now he's not the Antichrist, but man. We got more. There's no blemish in him. Do you want to see the type of Antichrist in that one? Exodus 12.5. Exodus 12, 5. And with Exodus 12, 5, let me quote to you John the Baptist. In Exodus 12, 5. I'm not, I mean, John the Baptist is not 12, 5, but let me quote John the Baptist of Exodus 12, 5. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Exodus 12, 5. It said there was no blemish in him. There was no blemish in Jesus. He's sinless. Your lamb, the lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, shall be without blemish. A male of the first year. Now that is not Absalom. He was the third son. Amon was the first son and is dead. Not all types go 100%, but look at there. Without blemish, that's the Lamb. That is the Lamb of God without sin that came to take away the sin of the world. And look how Absalom matches that. No blemish in him. No spots, no freckles, no scars, proper teeth, nothing dysfunctional. You know, he could have taken the office of the priest. One of the things that for for a for a priest, if he was a dwarf, if he had a crooked nose, he could not do the office. Absalom could step into the holy place. Absalom could step into the most holy place without the blemish. As 
the Antichrist will do. But we know the Antichrist is fallen because we know it's Satan incarnate. We know Jesus Christ is sinless, God incarnate in the flesh. And when he pulled, now this this there's three times is only in this verse. Pulled, pulled, pulled. Notice the numbers associated with this guy. Three times. The only place that ever this pole shows up, that's to cut the hair. Cut hair. You get it pulled. So, when you go to the pole, we got a pole cap. That's counting your head. That's where the word comes from. It comes from the Bible. We counted 20 people in this room. I would, how'd you count? We, we count their heads that you pulled them. It's an election term found in the Bible, and it's reference to a man who's type of Antichrist. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Did I just hear America, Americans hit the ground, turn off the thing? And when he pulled his head, head, for it was for it was at every year's end that he pulled it. This guy only cut his hair once a year. Because the hair was heavy on him. His hair got so heavy at the end of the year, he cut it. You want to see another type of Antichrist and another character that we read in the Bible? Who else had long hair? Samson. Samson was right with God. He's in the great faith chapter of Hebrews 11. Absalom's not there. Samson had lust. Yes, we studied that. But do you realize there's a passion about, I don't know, I forget where it is, but it mentions that the Antichrist is not going to have no regard for any women or anything. He's not going to regard the, the gods of his fathers. It's going to be him and only him. Because his hair, his hair was heavy on him. Therefore he pulled it. He weighed the hair of his head. You ever have your hair cut and then put it on a scale? How weird is that? That when they cut his hair, he swept it up and put it in a scale and in 200 shekels after the king's weight, it would be anywhere from three and a half to four pounds of hair. That's heavy. Heavy weight. All right, get on the scale. Okay, cut my hair. Okay, watch me lose weight. I lost four pounds by the hair. Every year the Bible says about this man, there's something about it. He has about anywhere between, I'm going to say, three to four pounds of hair to be. Why is that in there? Why we read about Samson and his hair? Why is there a standard for the Jews about their hair and their beards? Why is it says in Corinthians, is it not against nature or something like that for a man to have long hair? And according to the law, yes, Jesus had long hair and he had a beard. So if you were to look at a U.S. president that you hate who does not have long hair, that would not match the Antichrist. Something about hair in the Bible. There's standards. And unto Absalom, there were born three sons and one daughter, whose name was Tamar. She was a woman of fair countenance. Now you say, wait a minute, we just read about Tamar. And it says over here, verse 1, 13, 13 verse 1. We get it straight. And it came to pass after this, that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. Well, it says over here, daughter. There are two Tamars. And of Absalom, there's a sister named Tamar. And there's a daughter named Tamar. Now, did he name his daughter after his sister? I don't know. He had love for her. He had a care for her. But there are two Tamar. No description. There's many places in even the Bible that, that men and women are named for their parents. That happens. It happens all the time. We call them second and third and junior. And so Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem. That's an interesting number, two years. A year and a half, the Antichrist is going to set up in the most holy place. 
and saw not the king's face. <laughs> if David's a type of Jesus, two years without Jesus, without the Holy Spirit, time of Jacob's trouble. The face of Jesus is going to be at the rapture for those that are saved. Wouldn't it be weird the fact is that when maybe if only Antichrist sees Jesus calling home his saints, calling home the church, and he looks up at Jesus, okay, it's time for me to do what I need to do. That moment that the Christians start disappearing in the graveyards, wherever they're buried, wherever they've been cremated, or are still alive, that is now to the Antichrist, it starts your clock. Now, I don't know what that clock is. And it's so funny because I was thinking the other day, I was reading about some saints that had been cremated by the church. And people are so against cremating. I know it is a vile pagan ritual, but are you saying because if a church takes a saint and cremates their body, they're not going to heaven? You're a fool. I don't know where I got that from. But two years from Jerusalem and saw not the king's face. That's that's a date. That's a year. What does it signify? I have no idea, but it's important. Tell me. With verse 28. Tell me exactly by the Bible what month, day, and year Jesus was born, please. But I can tell you Absalom lived two full years in Jerusalem. The dwelling of Absalom is more important than the birthday of Jesus. The month, day, and year. And when we're dealing with the Antichrist, it's for the Jews. The Jews are going to be getting, they have the Old Testament. And when stuff starts happening, and the signs, and the wonders, and the seals, and the bowls, they're going to their Bible. Therefore Absalom sent for Joab to have sent him to the king. That was hard reading. Therefore Absalom sent for Joab to have sent him. That's hard. My English teacher would mark that wrong, but it's the Bible, King James. But he would not come to him. And when he sent, when he, when he sent again the second time, he would not come. So Joab, come here. Where is he? He didn't come, sir. Joab, get over here. Where is he? He didn't come. Therefore he said unto his servants, See, it's funny how Satan said in Genesis 3 1, Yea, has God said. Now, see, lust of the eyes. See, Joab's field is near and mine. So Joab, as a military warrior, he's a captain of David's army. And he has barley there. Joab is not reliant on the complete income of his military pay. When he's not in battle, he has a field and he's growing crops. kind of interesting. Go and set it on fire. Let's go to Exodus 22, 6. Let's see what the law says about this Absalom. Exodus 22, 6. He's going he's gonna to have an arson. <laughs> he's going to have his men arson burn Joab's field. 22, 6. Which Absalom does not do this. And when you, Exodus 22, 6, you can write the name Absalom here next to this verse if you mark your Bible. Absalom, uh, Absalom. Exodus 22, 6, I get that guy's name messed up. Oh. If I call him Solomon, forgive me. If fire break out, if, and, what's that word? I got it so, Mark. If fire break out and, What's that word? 
catch. That's the first time catch shows up. My marking overdid that word. Catch in thorns. Well, it wasn't thorns. So that the stacks of corn or standing corn, barley. This is not corn if you think of American corn. This would be barley or wheat. Or the field be consumed. Therewith, he that kindleth the fire shall surely make restitution. And Absalom does not do that. Now, this is even an accidental fire. You got stacks of, of, of brush piled up, and if it catches fire somehow, you're responsible. But Absalom tells his servants, go over there and set the barley on fire. Absalom is not only a murderer, he's an arsonist. Yeah, he has his servants do it, but what have we learned about the person that gives the orders? Romans, uh, yeah, Romans 13. So he has barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. <laughs> That's interesting. Did we not read in Lamentations today, chapter 1? Oh, that city was so beautiful. So wonderful. And yet, it sits on fire. It has been burnt to the ground. That reference in Lamentations 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and 5. I think there's 6. Also marks what the Antichrist is going to do. The Bible records that in one of the, the sevens, that there will be one third of the forest will be burnt down. And another place in the Bible, I, I don't know where it is, it says so many trees are going to be, be wiped out that a child will be able to count how many trees are left. The Antichrist is associated with some kind of fire that God and he will set. I believe one of the things that the Bible says in Revelation, he's going to call down fire. I, now I'm thinking about that early in the book of Revelation about the time when Moses and Elijah showed up. Then Joab arose. <laughs> He's got Joab's truncheon now. And came to Absalom unto his house and said unto him, Wherefore have thy servants set my field on fire? And Absalom answered Joab, now watch this, not exact, but watch the type of Antichrist. Behold, I sent unto thee saying, Come hither. Jesus says, Come up hither. Don't mess with the Bible. That I may send thee to the king, David, to say, Wherefore am I come from Geshur? Why am I here? It may be good for me to have been, have been there still now. Therefore, let me see the king say, you know, why am I here? I should have just stayed in Geshur. If I can't see his face, all right? If there be any iniquity in me, and there is, it's the man of iniquity, it's the man of sin, Thessalonians says, let him kill me. Well, God's going to take him and cast him off in the lake of fire that burns forever. So Joab came to the king and told him. When he had called for Absalom, he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground. Satan is not going to do that. The Antichrist is not going to do that. Before the king, and the king kissed Absalom. Now David kisses Absalom. Let's go to Luke 15, 20. David kissed. Luke 15, 20. Let's see a reversal. By the way, Judas is definitely a type of antiquity. Luke 15, 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he yet was great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. That's not the reference. All right, so here's the father. All right, I was thinking of another place. Here's the father 
When the sun comes, he kisses him. Now, where is the place where Judas kisses Jesus? That's the one I thought it was. That's David in, in Psalm, uh, Absalom. Oh. Luke 22. Luke 22. 47. 47. It's good to have a family that knows their Bible. So Luke 22, 47. So that was a perfect of David and Absalom. That's a good note. But watch the Antichrist now. Type of Antichrist. Some believe Judas is the Antichrist. And while he yet spanked, behold, a multitude, and he was, and he that, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve. What's one and twelve equal? Thirteen. Went before them. By the way, one and twelve is always associated with Judas. Went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. And what is Jesus' response? Jesus said unto him, Judas. Betrayest, that's the only time that word shows up. Thou the son of man with a kiss. That's interesting. So we have a man, a father, whose son has returned. Man, I am so glad to see you, son. He gives him a kiss. And you have an antichrist type. Walks up right to Jesus and says, mm, that's the one. Take them. And many religious and political figures, one of the ways you greet them is with a kiss on each cheek or the ring or the foot. And the Antichrist will be a, will be a leader one day. Now, we're not done with Absalom. It only gets worse in 15. But we ended this chapter now, and all the types. And we need to see the types of Jesus to learn about Jesus. And we need to see the types of the Antichrist to learn about the Antichrist. But as far as a Christian, as far as a born-again Bible-believing Christian, I don't need to worry about the mark. I don't need to worry about the Antichrist because I'm going to see Jesus before the Antichrist sets up any kind of government. You can put a mark in, if my family has to put me into a home, or they say, Mrs. Hayward, okay, you want to keep your husband home. If we put this thing in his right hand, you will be able to monitor wherever your husband is. And you can keep him home. Honey, put that mark in my right hand, because that is not the mark of the beast. That's to help you, to help me, so I can stay home and be with you. People and Christians are worried about the 666. That is after we're gone, after the last church age. But why study Antichrist? Because it's in the Bible. Why study Antichrist? Well, maybe some Jews are going to look on YouTube one day. And they're going to look at a Gentile with a sign that says he is risen. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And they're going to say, well, ooh. But that guy is studying 2 Samuel is happening right now in Jerusalem. We need to listen to this guy's tape. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe God will use these for the Jews to get right. I hope he does. I hope the Jews get right. I pray for them. I'm supporting some of the missionaries over there. But it's Bible doctrine. But here is doctrine I don't need to be afraid of. I'm going to go see Jesus before I see the Antichrist. 